Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Thursday of the second week of Advent. And today we have another memorial. We have the memorial of St. John of the Cross, priest and doctor of the church. And again, I really want to encourage you, take some time today and look him up online or look in a saint's book and find out the great ways in which St. John of the Cross had such an amazing impact on the life of the church. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent are taking it by force. All the prophets and the law prophesied up to the time of John, and if you are willing to accept him, he is the Elijah, the one who is to come. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Lord Jesus Christ. Well, uh, from uh, today through Sunday, we're going to have a lot of emphasis on John the Baptist. We're going to hear a lot of different things about him, and it will end up, again, with his uh, proclamation on Sunday uh, concerning the coming of the Lord. And John the Baptist, as you know, forms a unique place in human history. He, he is, in one person, the last prophet of the Old Testament and the first prophet of the New. He continues to uh, perpetuate the message that we heard from the prophets of the Old Covenant concerning the coming of the Messiah, and he's bringing about a bridge to the New Covenant by talking about the Messiah who has come, that he is at hand, and that he himself, as we heard last Sunday, is a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. So he has been sent, raised up, in order to prepare the way for Jesus. And today in our reading, we hear Jesus affirming his position, a unique position, again, of being that bridge between the old and the new. And one of the things that he says here uh, uniquely in our passage, he says, if you've got the ears to hear, he is Elijah, the one who is to come. Well, how is he likening and linking John the Baptist to Elijah? It goes back to the final prophet of the Old Testament, the prophet Malachi. 400 years, there were 400 silent years in terms of the prophets Uh, from the time of Malachi to the time of John the Baptist. Malachi being the last prophet, but it's interesting, the final verses in Malachi's prophecies. And this is what Malachi prophesies. He says, Remember the law of Moses my servant, whom I charged at Horeb, with statutes and ordinances for all Israel. In other words, he's referring the people of his time back to the law and the prophets, back to the ordinances, the the Torah of Moses, the law of Moses, that they are to adhere, adhere to that. And then he speaks prophetically of something that will happen in the future. They did not know it, but from the time of Malachi, to the fulfillment of this prophecy, it was 400 years. And this is what Malachi prophesies. He says, Now I am sending to you Elijah the prophet. Before the day of the Lord comes, the great and terrible day, he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their sons and the hearts of the sons to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with utter destruction. So, again, what he is talking about here is that there will be a prophet like Elijah. Elijah was, of course, centuries before Malachi. 
But he says, I'm going to send Elijah the prophet. And that was John the Baptist. He even looked like Elijah, very much uh, similar in dress and in demeanor and in message. And again, turning the hearts of the fathers to the sons, the hearts of the sons to the fathers. He's not talking about uh, the reunion of families, but he's talking about the sons of the covenant being taken back to the fathers of the covenant. Again, this is the message of, of Elijah. That was the message then of John the Baptist. Repent and return to the Lord. And the hearts of the sons to the fathers, but the hearts of the fathers to the sons, that the heart of the law and the the the, uh, the message of the law to give their self, give themselves to the Lord. You know, uh, I have the Lord and one God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. As Jesus summarized the law, and uh, and again the the summary of Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. So that, that message from the fathers, the patriarchs, was being renewed in the hearts and minds of the people of John's day. And the sons of the fathers returning again to the words of hope, the words about the Messiah, the words of Isaiah. I am a voice crying in the wilderness, John said. I'm preparing the way for the Lord that was prophesied before. And so here we have in this little tiny section of Scripture, this affirmation of John's ministry, a linking of the Old Covenant to the New, a linking of what John was reporting and connecting the people back to the teachings of God the Father and the teachings that would link them to the coming of the one who was the Messiah promised long ago, but now is at hand in the world during the day of John the Baptist. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You know, we really can't have Advent without John the Baptist. John the Baptist is the one preparing the people of his day. He's also preparing the people of our day. His words continue to ring through the halls of history, calling us to prepare our hearts for the way of the Lord. So again, this is a beautiful Advent message, a reminder to prepare your heart, to do all that you need to do that you might be prepared to fully and more completely celebrate the Christmas that is soon coming, but also preparing yourself for the coming of the one who will come at the end of time. Jesus, the Redeemer, the Lord, the Savior of all mankind will return, and he will return at the end of time, but also at the time of our death, we will encounter him again. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.